Praise God. So we're going into our message um, for this morning. And I have a few scriptures. I'll give them to you in case you decide to try and follow along. But I'm going to read them and read them quickly. Um, we're going to do 1 Samuel 20, 41 through 42. Psalms 55, 11 through 14. Nehemiah 6, 13. And Matthew 26, 23 through 25. Our sermon for this morning is titled, Betrayed and Brokenhearted. Betrayed and Brokenhearted. And we're going to do a series. This series, this is going to be part one, but our series is Watch and Pray. And we'll do the Watch and Pray series until God tells us otherwise. But this is the first in the series. 1 Samuel 20, 41 through 42 is, As soon as the lad was gone, David arose out of a place toward the south and fell on his face to the ground and bowed himself three times. And they kissed one another and wept with one another until David exceeded. And Jonathan said to David, go in peace, for as much as we have sworn both of us in the name of the Lord, saying, the Lord be between me and thee and between my seed and thy seed forever. And he arose and departed, and Jonathan went into the city. And then Psalm 55, 11 to 14 says, For it was not an enemy that reproached me, then I could have borne it. Neither was it he that hated me, that did magnify himself against me, then I would have hid myself from him. But it was thou, a man mine equal, my guide, mine acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked into the house of, the, of God in company. Nehemiah 6.13 Therefore was he hired that I should be afraid and do so and sin, and that they might have matter of an evil report, that they might reproach me. Last scripture, Matthew 26, 23 to 25. And he answered and said, He that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. The Son of Man goeth as it is written of him, but woe unto that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. Then Judas, which betrayed him, answered and said, Master, is it I? He said unto him, Thou hast said. May God add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. Now, I've read you a few scriptures this morning. Uh, one of them was uh, Jonathan and David encountering each other and David and Saul. And to know that story, David was a shepherd boy. He was uh, still living at home with his family. And his assignment was to watch the sheep, to guard the sheep, to care for the sheep. And one day while he was minding his own business, the prophet came. God sent the prophet to the city, to the town, to declare and anoint the next king. And he did so, so uh, kind of in a secret-like manner because there was a king already in place that had fallen out of favor with God. And God chose this little boy to take his place. This little boy, Samuel, would take his place. But it was for a time to come. And now Samuel, uh, and, and now Samuel went back to his city. And now David, uh, is left with this knowledge to ponder in his heart, to ponder in these events. He's been anointed, but he still has to stay in place. Training still needs to take place. And David, um, one day his father sent him, his brothers were in battle. There was a giant, uh, professing against the people of God and terrorizing them. And David just, um, you know how you on God's path for you. So that's why, you know, we have the scripture says steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. David was following along his path, just being obedient to his father, went to take them something to eat. And then he heard this giant and we know the story how David got involved and slayed the giant. 
Then there was another occasion with Saul now. He's in disobedience to God. He's been hounded. So he's go, he goes into these de depressive states. He's hounded by demon, the demon, demonic activity and gets very depressed. And so they said, let's uh, find a minstrel that would be able to minister to him. And, and they appointed, they found David. Somebody told them about this shepherd boy that played a, a instrument, played musical instrument. I believe it was a harp. I, I can't be sure at this time. I didn't um, take note of that part. But so David plays for Saul. It soothes him. It chases the demons away. And and when that happens, Saul gets uh, that deliverance, that lift, that, um, you know, it chases out the enemy. What a, a anointing to have where you have a gift, whether you're singing or whether you're playing, that it drives demons out of the house. Well, furthermore, there was a, another opportunity for battle. So, and, and Saul, and, and Saul had the creator, there was something, if he was able to do, accomplish this task, whoever accomplished this task will now have his daughter to wife and be in his household. So, here comes uh, David now. He hears it. He accomplishes the task in battles, brought back the foreskins of the enemy. And now he's allowed to marry uh, Saul's daughter, the princess. And now he's in the house of royalty. And he's made friendship with Jonathan, who was Saul's son, who should have been next in line to be king. And now they're friends. And now Jonathan is training David in the ways of royalty and how to conduct himself. And it wouldn't God do something like that. So he got on the job training, but it wasn't intentional. They loved each other and they were friends, but all Saul got jealous. And he heard the people singing, uh, Saul has killed his thousand, but David, his 10,000s and jealousy rooted up in his heart. And he sought to kill David. And David has to run. Jonathan has warned them, you better get away because my father intends to harm you. And as he escapes, they decided to meet. They had already made an agreement to meet in a secret place. And now they're meeting and he's uh, filling David in. He said, yes, he intends to kill you. You're going to have to hide. And they cry because they know they have to separate. And they cried and they cried and they cried. And now they're they have to separate and can't be in fellowship with each, with each other because Saul now is jealous and has become David's enemy. Hallelujah. And so now, and then we also see where uh, Nehemiah 6, 13, that is where the, the children of Israel and the and children of Judah, they had been caught, they had been brought into captivity in Babylon and other kings and by and by another king is in place. And this king has a, a gentle heart toward them and said, okay, you can go back to your homeland and rebuild your temple. And he allowed Nehemiah to go and to do that business. But there was someone there named Sambalat. And Sambalat was a Samaritan. Samaritans were where the, the, the kingdom of Israel had been split after after David, after Solomon and, and Judah went one way with Jerusalem, which was the headship uh where the, the was the capital at the time. They they split and then the rest of Israel went another way and they called their country uh their their capital was Samaria. So now, instead of being happy because the, the children of God, uh, their brethren have been allowed to come out of captivity and rebuild walls and rebuild the temple, instead of that, some ballot who should have been happy, who should have tried to help without malice in his heart, he wanted to help, but it wasn't for good. And thank God for allowing Nehemiah to discern good from evil that he said, no, you can't build with us. We got this. And because he wouldn't allow them to build with them, Sambalat now is trying to cause trouble on every hand to keep that wall from being built. And Nehemiah 613 is saying in case that they were looking to harass them, to find fault in them so that they can turn in an evil report. They will cause them to fall so they can turn in an evil report against them. Hallelujah. But then we come down to Matthew 
26, 23, and 35. And here we have Jesus. And Jesus has 12 disciples. Uh, that's symbolic in himself, just like the tribes of Israel. And he's chosen 12 disciples, but one of those disciples wasn't right. He had a hard condition. He had a problem, a situation. And yes, we're still talking about this morning, betrayal and, and broken hearted, betrayed and broken hearted. And so uh, we find that this one that Jesus has chosen, Jesus has taught, Jesus has groomed. Just like he fed the others, he fed him. Just like he loved the others, he fed him. But Judas decided to betray Jesus and turn him over to his enemies that Jesus should be killed. And we see these different scriptures reflected in the Bible and all of these reveal examples of betrayal. So what's going on? We see individuals who are broken hearted. They're and, and like in the case of David and, 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 and Saul, I served you. I guarded your house. I gave you victory in your kingdom. I helped you obtain it. I chased demons away from you, but you hate me. I've done no wrong to you, but you hate me. And as in the Psalms that we read this morning, Psalms uh, 55, 11 through 14, where it's like, I could have taken it if it were an enemy. But it's you, a mine own house. And we know that's not the only time David had been betrayed. Several things, several stories. We'll get into that, hopefully, in this series. Had happened where uh, someone had turned on him and turned to the other side. And these things happen. Hallelujah. They, they happen to us. They happen to all of us in life. These types of situations break our heart. We are left broken hearted. It means, and I'm going to say this morning, our heart broke. I want to talk to you about our natural heart this morning. But if you can identify with anything that I'm talking about this morning, hallelujah, you could raise your hand in your household right where you are and say, Lord, fix my heart. I'm going to talk about the natural condition of the heart this morning. Just a little bit. I'm talking about the physical heart at this morning. I'm making a segue. Um, we have situations where there, we call them a hearts, where we have heart trouble in the natural. We have a heart malfunction in the natural. And one of them is a situation where we have heart rhythm disorders. And these types of disorders can be categorized in three different categories. We have electrical, circulatory and structural. So now if it's a circulatory problem, I'm going to liken it to God's love in that category. Uh, high blood pressure and coronary artery disease that these things cause blockages in the pipes and in our arteries, that those that supply blood to the heart. And these are the, this is the main cause, high blood pressure is the main cause of blood vessel disorders. It's, it, it results in a stroke or heart attack, which can be devastating. Love, especially operating in the love of God, is, is like our circulatory system. When we operate in love, our hearts function right and our mind and thoughts are pure. And we know how to love God and his people. We will have a live a life of gratitude and we don't and we won't operate. But, but when we don't operate out of love, we have a circulatory problem. Unforgiveness, retaliation, envy, strife. All of these cause blockages in our hearts. Our thoughts become toxic, and if we don't get it in control, it can deter up deter others from coming to Christ. We have become bad witnesses for Christ, and it may lead to spiritual death, just like this type of problem uh, in the natural would could lead to a natural death. Then there are structural problems of the heart. We'll call that our foundation. 
it heart muscle disease, and, which is called cardiomyopathy, and genital abnormalities, problems in the development of the heart and the blood vessels, which are present from birth, are two problems that can damage the heart muscles or valves. And the Bible says, I was shapen in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Because Adam sinned, we were all born in sin. We're born, this is our congenital situation. We're born with an unclean heart. But we don't have to remain that way. It is not according to God's original creation, and it's not his intention that we remain that way. Well, God provided a solution. Jesus is our solution. When nothing else could help, when sacrificing animals and the blood of sheep and goats couldn't help, God looked for a man, but none could do. But Jesus volunteered for the job. Hallelujah. God, he's saying, Father, I'll go down. Prepare me a body. Jesus is our ultimate sacrifice. He gave his life so that I could become one with him. I got a heart transplant when I came to Jesus. My heart is fixed. I'm regenerated and I'm justified. Hallelujah. Thank God for a solution to a broken heart, to a heart that's broke. And then we have electrical problems and the electrical problems will help us uh, understand Holy Spirit. Abnormal heart rhythms, uh, arrhythmias, arrhythmias are caused by a problem in the electrical system that regulates the steady heartbeat. The heart rate may be too slow or it may be too fast. It may be steady or become chaotic, irregular, disorganized. Some arrhythmias are very dangerous and cause sudden cardiac, cardiac death, while others may be bothersome but not life-threatening. Through Christ, God has given us his spirit, Holy Ghost. When we obey Holy Spirit and seek his wisdom, we keep our heart functioning right. Holy Spirit is like our electrical system. But when we won't follow the Spirit and despise God's counsel, we're operating out of order, opposite of godly character, and often we're operating out of season. As believers in Christ, we love people and quickly embrace them. This love has caused us to override Holy Spirit at times. We're getting into dangerous category when we operate, when we're ignoring Holy Spirit, when he's talking to us or, or when he's warning us. All of us have that system internally that goes, mm, it, mm, it starts buzzing when something is wrong. But when we disobey Holy Ghost, we put ourselves in harm's way. It will take God to deliver us when we do that. So we're praying, but we have to learn how to watch and pray. While we're praying, we must spiritually open our eyes because God is trying to give us a revelation. He's trying to show us, but we love the person. Sometimes he's saying, stay away from that person. Or when you're talking to that person, we'll hear that buzzing that says, quiet down, don't say that. Don't tell them that. Back up and slow down. He's trying to show us something, but we love the person and we refuse to see. Holy Ghost does not lie. And that's what I've learned for sure. Every time I overrode the Holy Spirit or what I felt God was saying, every time I dismissed them, not intentionally being disobedient, but still disobedient. Every time I come to see that Holy Ghost was right all along and Holy Ghost does not lie. And because we wouldn't listen or I wouldn't listen. It has caused a malfunction in the heart and you find yourself or I have found myself in the past broken hearted. Hallelujah. 
hanging with people that we shouldn't have been with uh, will cause us to be broken hearted. And then we've hung with them and we revealed our secrets and we gotten all close to them. And then they start pulling a back a little bit. And when they are exposed, they try to act like it wasn't them. They have no intention of repenting to you or asking your forgiveness. Instead, they lie and they turn towards your loved ones and they turn them against you and they turn other folks against you. And then they'll start tearing up your reputation to cover up themselves. Judas played dumb. He's sitting with the disciples and sitting with Jesus and he's a wolf clothed like a sheep. And he has the nerve to say, Lord, is it I? And I want you to know that Jesus was never deceived. He knew about Judas already. He knew Judas already was going to betray him, but he kept with the plan. He stayed with the plan of God because there was a purpose in him coming. There was a purpose in him being betrayed. There's a purpose in him dying. So he allowed it. For, that, for a kingdom purpose, which was ultimately for our good. But we are trying to love folk that Holy Ghost is telling us to get away from. You can love folk, but you don't have to put yourself in harm's way. You can love folk at a distance. You can love folk, that, but be cautious because some folk are just not safe for you. But when we ignore Holy Ghost, uh, now uh, we find that we've ignored Holy Ghost and we wouldn't listen when he tried to warn us. And the person that we were dealing with is acting distant because they've already done their dirt. And they uh, then now they want to ignore you and get away from you because all, they got that secret that they needed. And, and because they know that eventually they're going to be exposed and they don't want to be in the line of fire when you figure it out. Uh, and now now you're seeing that friends that you that used to be in your circle have distanced themselves too and you're wondering what you did and how could you fix it well you didn't do anything to them nor the person split nor did you do anything uh, to the person spreading the evil report and that's what's wrong that person has spread an evil report and they received the evil report and like David as I could have understand if it was somebody but not in my own house, not in my own circle. You walk with me, you ate with me, we fought together, and now you believe in an evil report. Well, I'm saying to you, don't worry about it. Leave it alone. Only God can fix it. There's nothing that you can do about it. You didn't do anything in the first place, but by and by, you'll find out it was an enemy that gave them that evil report, like what happened in Nehemiah that we read earlier. An enemy. A uh, Judas has done this thing. The report wasn't true, but folk believed it anyway. You're left broken hearted. And I'm telling you to release that thing and let it go. Let God fix your heart. Repent because you should have listened to the Holy Ghost. You should have obeyed God. So repent. Hallelujah. Because you let the devil in. Hallelujah. And you wouldn't have been hurt anyway. Repent and let it go. Forgive them too and let it go. Forgive yourself and let it go. And now let's check our own selves because uh, we want to make sure that we're not like the person who we're looking at today that broke our heart. We don't want to turn around and break somebody else's heart because I've always heard the saying that said, hurt people, hurt people, hurting people, hurt people. And you don't want to turn around and hurt other people. So it may not be intentional, but you just have to check yourself. Can you be trusted? Can we be trusted? Are we spreading evil reports? Uh, some of us tell half-truths to make ourselves look good and the other person look bad. We'll tell what they did, but we don't tell what we did to cause the matter ourselves. What am I talking about? I'm saying, just like Judah said, is it I? I'm saying, is it you? Look in the mirror. Is it me, Lord? Is it me? Am I a person that cannot be trusted? We don't want to be like that. We always, when God reveals something, it's always time for us to figure it out and get it right. 
Some of us don't know how to be a good friend to anybody. We need to repent before God because our heart isn't right. And because our heart is broken, we go around doing things that leave other people uh, broken hearted. I'm asking you to repent right now. Is he just lift your hands and say, fix me, Jesus. Fix my heart, Jesus. Fix my broken heart. Hallelujah. And if that's you, you can be forgiven. Just say with me, Lord, please forgive me and help me to do better. Help me to watch and pray, to hear your spirit, to obey Holy Spirit when you're talking to me. And for those of you who don't know Jesus in the part of your pardon of your sins, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I want to accept you as my Lord and Savior and know more about you so that I can do better. Heal my broken heart and heal the hearts of the people I have hurt. I love you. I'll accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen.